so hello everyone and welcome back before i move on to the video i have some things that i want to talk about so going forward i was thinking that i will only make two videos for every code forces and every code around because it is obviously not possible for me to make a video for every problem so for the same reason i will have a poll on my discord server for every contest where you guys can vote for two problems that you guys want to see the videos for and i will only make videos for those two problems right it will also help me to improve the quality of the videos and videos will also get better views so i think this is a win win for both of us so i will leave a link to my discord server in the comments i will also have it on the screen so be sure to join it and vote for your favorite problems that you guys want to see the videos for that was it for the intro and let's move on to the video now and in this video i'll solve problem c that is complementary zor from cotton round 3 It is currently, I think, 2 a.m. in the morning. So I will also try to make a video for problem D. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, let's move on to the video now. Before we move on to the solution, uh, I want to take a small break and tell you guys about Newton School's Premier Coding Contest. So as all of you guys love CP and all of you, all of you guys love to code, this is a great opportunity to show off your coding skills and also win some cash prizes. There are prizes worth up to thirty thousand, and along with this, you can also win some free coding courses or also grab some internship opportunities, right? So uh, for this reason only, Newton School organizes this contest every month on a global scale. So you can also benchmark yourself where you are lacking or where you are standing uh, compared to other students. So this month it will be on twenty seventh October. It will be around two and a half hours, starting from nine pm. and it is absolutely free to uh, sign up for so there will be there will be a link down below so do check out that link and sign up for the contest for absolutely free yeah so let's move on to the solution now so in the problem uh, we have been given two binary strings a and b of size n where n can be up to 10 to the power 5 so something like a1 a2 a3 so on up to an and something like b1 b2 b3 so on up to bn All the elements a i comma b i belong to zero comma one because both of them are binary strings. Now we want to make all the bits in a equal to zero and all the bits in b all equal to zero. So we want to make both the strings a and b equal to all zeros. And to do this, we have been given an operation. In the operation. Uh, for example you can choose a range from let's say l to r for example if i have something like a1 a2 a3 so on up to an and i have something like b1 b2 b3 so on up to bn so if i choose a range l to r then i have to flip all the bits from range l to r in string a uh, so i have to flip all the bits from al up to ar in string a and i have to flip the leftover bits in string b so the leftover bits are b1 up to bl minus 1 so i have to flip these bits in string b and br plus 1 to bn in string b right i have to flip these as well so that is the operation so in the operation you can choose some range l to r flip all the bits uh, in range l to r in string a and flip the leftover bits in string b so that is the operation If you can do this operation at most n plus five times, we can do this operation at most n plus five times. We have to answer in either yes or no. If we will be able to make a and b into all zeros or not, and that is the problem. So, given this operation, answer in either yes or no. If after applying this operation at most n plus five times, we will be able to convert strings a and b into all zeros or not. and if we are able to convert we also have to give the list of operations right so if the answer is yes we also have to give the list of operations uh, how can you do this so let's move on to the observations the very first observation that you need is observation 1 all the corresponding bits what i mean by corresponding bits is uh, bits ai and b right these are corresponding bits so all the corresponding bits in a and b should either be equal or unequal right otherwise the answer is false or you can say no 
right so what that means is that for every index i either all the elements ai should be equal to bi or ai should not be equal to bi both of them should not be true at the same time and if they are true at the same time then the answer is impossible or false now how do i prove this so to prove this i can take a small example uh, let's say your string a is equal to 1 1 and your string b is equal to 1 0 so here for the first index a1 is equal to b1 and for second index a2 is not equal to b2 so both of the conditions are true at the same time so now if we can prove that it is never possible to convert these two strings to all zeros we will be able to satisfy our argument and to do that uh, we will count the number of bits that need to be flipped here as you can see we have to flip these three ones to make it all zeros so, so you can say that we have to flip three bits to make it all zeros or instead of saying three you can also say that we have to flip odd number of bits right so we have to flip odd number of bits to make it all zeros but if you try to apply operations here uh, let's say we have a equal to one one and b equal to one zero so if you choose let's say l equal to one and r equal to one so you apply an operation in this way we choose this bit and this bit and if you flip them you will get a equal to zero one and b equal to one one so as you can see you only flip two bits this one and this one so you were able to flip two bits or you can say that instead of two you can say that you flipped even number of bits similarly if you try some other operation let's say for this string we again apply operation on uh, we choose l equal to one and r equal to two so you apply operation on these two bits you will get a equal to one zero and b equal to one one so again you only flip two bits this one and this one so you are only able to flip even number of bits right but to make this to all zeros we have to flip odd number of bits right so this way you have proved that no matter what operation you do you will always flip even number of bits but to convert this to all zeros we have to flip odd number of bits so it is never possible to make these strings all zeros using the given operation right so that satisfies our argument so all the corresponding bits in a or b should either be equal or unequal and if they are not then the answer is impossible so that is the first observation let's now move on to the second one before i move on to the second observation i want to define the type of strings that will help us later in the problem so i will define strings of type one such that for every index ai is equal to bi for example 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 right so for every index in string a and b all the elements are equal right these are strings of type 1 and next i will define a string of type 2 that is for every index ai is not equal to bi for example something like 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 right these are strings of type 2 so now let's define the second observation so for second observation we say that after every operation types will flip right so what that means is that if i have strings of type 1 and if i apply an operation on this it will become a string of type 2 similarly if i apply operation on strings of type 2 they will become strings of type 1 and to show this we can take some examples as well we have strings of type 1 let's say 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 let's say i apply operation on the following uh, substring so i will flip these three bits this bit and these three bits right so i will get what i will get 0 1 1 0 and 1 0 0 i will get 1 0 0 uh, 1 and 0 1 1 right so as you can see this was a string of type 1 and now all the bits are alternate right so now they have become strings of type 2 
Similarly, if you take strings of type two, so something like zero one, one zero one zero zero one. Let's say I choose uh, these bits. So I will flip these two, and I will flip these two. I will get one zero one zero. I will get one zero and one zero. Right. So as you can see, these were strings of type two, and after applying an operation, these became strings of type one. Right. So after every operation, uh, types will alternate. So if we apply operation on string of type one, they will become string of type. And these are the only operations that we need to solve the problem. So now let's move on to the approach how we can solve it. Uh, so initially we have two strings a and b. Let's say they are of type one for now. For example, zero zero one one zero one zero zero one one zero one. I have to convert all the bits equal to zero. So what I will do is I will move through my string a, and wherever I find a one, I will apply an operation there. For example, I have a one here, so I will apply an operation here. Obviously, these strings were of type one, so my new strings will be of type two. So I have new strings a and b s. Zero 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 one zero one. I have one 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 zero one zero. Again, I will do the same thing. I will move through my string a, and wherever I find a one, I will apply an operation. So I have a one here, so I will apply an operation. So I will get my new strings as type one strings. This was type two, so my new strings will be type one. So I have a and b here. I have zero 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 one. So I have now zero 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 one. Right. I will keep doing this until all the bits in my string a are equal to zero. And in the end, I have only two possibilities. So in the end, I have only two possibilities. Either strings will be of type one, so that is zero 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 zero. In this case, I don't need to do anything. So the operations are over, right? But if it's the second case, that is, if in the end we get type two strings. All the bits in A are equal to zero, and all the bits in B are equal to one. In this case, we can apply three more operations. What are those operations? I can apply operation one comma one. So I will take this bit and flip it. My new bits will be how much? It will be one zero 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 so on, and it will be one zero 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 so on up to zero, right? Then I will apply an operation on two comma n, right? That is this part. I will get my new answer as one 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 so on up to one. Here I will get my new answer as zero and zero 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 so on up to zero. Then again I will apply an operation from one to n, right? That is on this whole array. So I'll get zero 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 so on up to zero and zero 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 so on up to zero, right? So now the operations are over, and that is the entire approach. So I will go through my string a, and wherever I find a one, I will apply an operation. I will keep doing this, and in the end, uh, when all the bits in a are equal to zero, I will only have two possibilities: either my strings will be of type one, where All the uh, elements are equal, so all the elements are al already zero. So I don't need to do anything, and the operations are over. But if in the end strings are of type two, that is bits are unequal, then I have to do three more operations. First operation is one comma one, so I will flip the first bit. Second operation is two comma n, so I have to flip all the bits from two to n. And the third operation is one to n. I will make all the bits zero again, right? So that is the entire approach. So if I have to summarize it once again. i will give a summary so for all corresponding bits they should either be equal or unequal if they are not then the answer is easily no right and if all of them are equal then we have a type 1 string otherwise we have a type 2 string right then go through every index in string a and if ai is equal to 1 flip it 
or you can say apply an operation on it right if ai is equal to one flip this bit or apply an operation on this bit and after you apply an operation types will also flip so also flip types right and after you are done in the end check if strings are of type one it's okay and if strings are of type two add three more operations that is one comma one two comma n and one comma n right that is the entire approach and in worst case we will use n operations here and we will use three operations here so in worst case it will take us n plus three operations which is less than n plus five so we are always able to do this in less than equal to n plus five operations and if you guys want to see the code for this uh, here is the code so i will take in two strings a and b i will define a vector answer which will store my pairs l and r for every operation then i will define a variable is equal this will store my type right is equal stores type of string right then for every index they should be of same type right so for i equal to 0 up to n they should be of same type and if they are not then i will just return false then for every index from 1 to n i will check if my ai is equal to 1 then if it is equal to 1 i will flip it or apply an operation on it so i will do answer dot push back the index of uh, the element and i will flip my type right because after every operation my types will be flipped so whenever i do an operation i will flip the types and in the end if not equal that is if i have strings of type 2 i will add three more operations and then i can just print out yes and print the number of operations and then print the operations and that is the entire solution so that was it for this video and i will also cover problem d so stay tuned for that as well and i will see you guys in the next one Bye bye